Hello, everyone. Welcome to Real Talk with the, the Cumbies. Cumbies. I'm Amanda. And I'm Scott. And it's truly a privilege to be with you. Today, we will be talking about what, Amanda? Some secrets about Christmas. Yes. Um, a few weeks ago, not that long ago, we had our eyes opened up we in the did. spiritual realm. And um, we didn't think we was doing nothing wrong. And um, as you looked on the video, you probably seen it already. On October the 30th, we started doing a purging in the house. And we seen some things in the fire, and um, it made us ask our, a lot of questions. And as we've been sick, and we wanted to know if we was deceived in that, how many more times have we been deceived? And uh, we found some information. I mean, it's, it's blowed our mind. <laughs> Just today, we've been over 5,000 pages today going through things. And every day, practically, we've been going over it, researching. And the information that I found and that you found, we found together, even our children's involved in it. The Holy Spirit was dealing with me, and He said, Scott, how do you eat a steak? And I said, one bite at a time. He said, give my people one piece at a time. And so what we're planning on doing is offering the people each day a piece of this puzzle and letting you understand is even as Hosea teaches us in chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's right. And they need to know this. So, yeah. Amanda, some of the things that we'll be talking about and this secret that we was, what, what is it? Well, before we get started, even the word when we're talking about, Scott was mentioned studying, and even the Bible tells us to study ourselves to show, show ourselves, ourselves approved. approved. And so that's what we want to <clears throat> do because we have studied and studied and it's really what we call mind-blowing because it goes really in-depth. And it's amazing how uh, we can easily adapt to things and how it comes in because that's how the enemy is. He comes in very keenfully, very, which meaning sly in his little ways. And we don't see that. He comes in so subtle with that we don't even see that we are being deceived because Scott and I has been there. And just like he said, we done some purging back in October, and we got to study and thinking, well, what else have we been deceived about? And what other holidays have we been deceived? Have we not been doing the right things? And so this is what's brought it about. And so um, please be praying for us, because what we are doing, we're doing, because we are being led by the Holy Spirit, and we want to bring you truth. And um, and the decision, just like it was our decision, will be left up to you. And you can also go study it for yourself, and we'll try to give you links and give you the facts, and most importantly, give you the Word and what God's Word says. So please be praying for us as we get ready to share our introduction today, introduction today <clears throat> of the secrets of Christmas. And as we share those secrets, there's going to be things that you're going to ask yourself, how in the world could this be possible? Right. And then when you have the information in front of you, that's left up to you what you do with it. But we understand, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's right. And we're going to give Him honor. We're going to give Him praise. And that's what it all comes down to. And thank God that we know now before it's too late. Because the Bible teaches us we're going to be judged. We are. And it tells us God, when we seek Him and we read His Word, He will give us revelation because there's mystery in that Word. And the more you seek Him and the more you want to um, know Him and know the trueness of His Word, He will reveal it to you. Well, let's start off with this wonderful character talking about Santa Claus. Now, yes. does the Bible teach us not to lie? Does it not? That's one of the commandments. Thou that shall is not. one of the commandments. Thou shall not lie. Yes. And what do we do? We bring deception in our house. Mm -hmm. We tell our children lies. Yeah. And we say Santa Claus will soon be here. And we tell them they better be good. On the naughty or nice list. He's got a list. He's checking it twice. We use manipulation. Manipulation is a form of witchcraft. And so as we start doing these things and we're telling our children, we're raising them up and we tell them so many more holidays, we tell them things that has nothing to do with the Word of God. It has something to do with just lies. That's all we can put out. And it comes from the enemy because when you start doing the research and you find out that we're not celebrating what we think we're celebrating. Correct. And a lot of it really comes from what we call, it's called paganism holidays. And paganism comes in through where 
our culture here in America, we have adapted other cultures where they've come in and we see it and we think it's fun and we think it's exciting. Oh, there's nothing to it. But when you actually take the time and you research it and research out the matter, because even the Bible tells us to research out the matter. It says study to show, yes. Yes, to study yourself, show your proof. And so that's what Scott and I have done. And a lot of it comes through the Catholicism, the Roman Catholics, and it's where they entered, where they would practice and do things. But the Christians were against some of these things, but then they change it and they swap They'll swap it or change dates and stuff, and they do it so they can convert the Christians over to their practices. So that's how carefully the enemy can come in. And on not things. even the not even on during the just, Catholic time, they were actually doing things. But most of this because of the pagans. Yes, they the wanted pagans. to tap in. They said, "Well, since they're celebrating this day, yes. we'll just add our date to their date, and we can all celebrate." Something, but really it was all about bringing up the Catholic Church. Because if you think of it, Christ, the word Christ means the anointing, the anointed one, Christ, and Mass. So think about it, the anointed Mass. And when you start thinking about that, and you start thinking about where did this Santa Claus come from, and we know when he came into America, Coca-Cola brought him in, and before that... Well, before that, there was also a favorite little poem that everybody will like to uh, the story was trust not before us and he even came in even before that so a lot of the things and a lot of the history is going to come from the northern european part of the world and then it was almost like they would uh, um compete with the romans and anyway it's almost like they coincide together or came together and met in the middle as some people would say is what you call meet in the middle and that's how they in their minds, they were thinking that's how we can convert Christians over as well to go along with the pagan holidays. And this is what's really so, interesting. you got pure demonic beings, and exactly. their purpose is to cause deception. Satan's come to kill, steal, and destroy, but God's come to give us life and have it more abundantly. So during this time, even before that we brought him in, Santa Claus, uh, his name was Saint Nick. Nicholas. Yes, there was Saint Nicholas, and then Saint Nicholas also had a little helper, which is coming very familiar. I was not familiar with it, but now it's coming familiar. He was even celebrated here in our state, North Carolina, in one of um, the, the parades. In a parade, um, not right here locally where we're at, but not too far away. Not too far. And his helper is Krampus. And now Krampus and is it's, it's amazing. He has bells. So now we understand when we hear these little Christmas bells start shaking, shaking, it's telling us that Krampus is coming. And I didn't realize all these things. They made a movie of it, yeah. Krampus, I believe 2015. And so now these are the same people that's making movies is helping our children also with certain networks. And yeah. as it ties in, they have chains. And Krampus comes along. And he looks like a goat-looking thing. And you'll see pictures of him because we got all these things lined up for you. Yeah. And he's got switches also. He beats these Twigs, children. yes. And the same, if you can then you compare it, Saint, uh, not St. Nicholas, but a Santa Claus also. Some people call him St. Nicholas. But on his sleigh, his reindeer are hooked up together with chains like, and they have bells. So you can also hear him coming. So... And but then you know we can leave from that point, and there is also it goes back to the Norse gods, and then with the Norse gods there is a person called Odin, mm. and Odin himself he is uh, classified as a wild game hunter, and he is known to be riding on his eight legged horse and that can eight. fly and his name is Sleepnar. So we will also share some of that with you and where he originated from as well. But that ties in also with Santa Claus. Because then if you stop and think about it, um Odin wanted to be all knowing. He wanted to seek more wisdom and knowledge. He wanted to be um more powerful, more magical. And if we stop and look, Santa Claus is also has so many characteristics. That's and right, we understand how he could astro project and that he could do shape shifting. And he would actually, they says, empower certain people. And it's really interesting even to look today at the Santa Clauses that plays in certain movies. Right. And how 
the lineage of the Catholics continue down from the, the Vatican. And it's interesting. And then we hear about, as Odin was sitting there, you have eight reindeer. He had an eight-legged mm-hmm. horse. And then when you take yeah. the number eight and you flip it on the side, Amanda, what, what symbol is that? That represents infinity. Yes, everlasting. And so, so that's what Satan's always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. He's always wanted to deceive from the very beginning the woman. And then it goes even back to a man named Nimrod. And Nimrod had a son, and his name was? Tamaz. Yes. And so which Tamaz was also born on December 25th, 25th is his birthday. So when we sometimes when we're actually thinking that we are celebrating Jesus Christ's birthday, in reality, it's a, considered a pagan holiday. And when we are celebrating on December 25th, it's really not Jesus what Christ, think. what we think, it's really celebrating Tomas. And we'll go in a little bit more detail yes. with that, where Tomas came from. His mama. His mother, his father, and how it also ties in with Odin and Santa Claus and all that as well. It even talks inside Ezekiel. It talks inside of Kings. It talks about how the people would sit there and they would cry for yes. Tomas. And Chronicles, and yes. All it goes in so depth and God says, he, Jesus walked them out and He says, you see this? There's going to come greater abominations. And the Bible teaches us there's nothing new. So what we look at the past, it shows us the future. Yes, because history shows us teaches us that it repeats itself. And even Nimrod, would yeah. be like, he would be called Baal, and that's the worship that they have. And so, so often, and wherever a candle's at, the light, we understand that. He yes. said he is present there, and he they is. want him to celebrate the sun, and the sun is Tamar's. Tamar's, that's right. And so, and, and from Tamar's, you'll learn about the evergreens and what it means, and the candles, which also ties in with the Christmas trees, and, and we'll the, go over that. How about the reefs, the reefs, yeah, and a lot of us um, will have reefs maybe hanging on our window with a candle, and that is going to be dealing with fertility, and it's going to be dealing with eternal, uh, yes. eternal life, like everlasting life, like never dying. So there's a lot of things that we're going to be sharing, but we're just hitting the highlights, pretty much like an introduction. Yes, and then at your windows and doors is your entrances yes, your of portals. your house. Yes. And so you got to understand when you hang these wreaths, when you put them on your doors and on your windows, when the spirits do come by, because we live in a spirit world, we're a body, we have a spirit and a soul, and the Holy Spirit's out there. And the Bible says, try the spirit. So that tells me more than they're more than one. And... These demonic beings are looking places to come. And under these evergreen trees that they decorate, and um, even the songs that we sing about rocking around the Christmas tree, they used to put them in the middle, middle and they would actually do chants around them and call in foreign spirits. And there's so many things, even the Santa hat that so many people wear, and they just walk around and say, uh, Merry Christmas, and they're just so happy. But what they don't realize, that's a higher power hat. Oh, power, just like the witch's hat. Just like the witch's hat. And then you got the gnomes, the elves have The elves, yes. And the gnomes and the elves are very close to relay. They're very similar. They're not too much difference about it, but... I also read in one of the uh, facts or histories where gnomes, nobody would really truly accept the little gnomes. Um, A lot of people put the gnomes like in the gardens for like protection over their garden and stuff. But that also will be tied in with like a mushroom that we learned about. And that goes with um, hallucinogenics. And that's what even that they would feed these beings to teach them. And then also in witchcraft, um, yeah. we got resources from so many people, ex-witches, ex-warlocks. We've got it from inside of all kinds of books through the computer. And as we start studying this, we realize there's a bigger picture than we've ever even tapped into. Yeah. And it's deception. There is a secret that has been kept secret. And the reason it's a secret is because if they don't talk about it, we continue in it. And the exactly. Bible tells us that there's certain feasts that God wants us to participate in, right. and some and of them don't line up with what we celebrate. They don't, and uh, these and Christmas time is truly never mentioned in the Bible. You know, yes, there was a virgin Mary, and yes, did she conceive Jesus? She did, and there were shepherds there abiding, and um, 
in the fields. And yes, there was that, and we call that the nativity. But it doesn't never say it's for Christmas time or celebrate at Christmas time because Jesus Christ was truly not born on December the 25th. And, and so, we understand that it was celebrated. Now, you got to understand one thing. I love Christmas. Yeah, so it's, this Christmas, was very hard for Christmas us. Christmas is my do. favorite day of the yes. year, 24-7. I lived in Christmas. Give me a song. I love them. I sing them. I'm just as happy. When I see the lights hanging, the garland, the Christmas trees, I'm ready. Let's do it all for Jesus. And I like, Jesus is the reason for the season. Merry Christmas to everybody. And then I realize that I have been deceived Yes. And it was devastating, honest and truthful. When I say devastating, everything, when you've reached 40s and you realize everything that you've been taught was a lie, it was deception, and then you realize, God, I need some help here. And I had two choices, deny it or accept the truth. And the Bible says a wise man takes counsel. He gets wiser. But now sometimes the foolish man, well, he just rejects everything. And so when we start seeing these people walk around with their little hats on, yeah. I'm looking at something totally different now. I'm looking at how the enemy takes and puts these hats on people, and then you see it on the Sandman. You see it on all these characters that comes along and through certain right. holidays, and we're deceived. We go inside our churches. And after the nativity's all done, we, it ain't good enough just to talk about Jesus. Then we got a special gift that come out. His name's Santa Claus. And we put the children up there, and then we tell them all the wonderful stories. And sometimes people act inappropriate around him, just flirting. And we find out that that's because of fertility gods and everything else from the mistletoe that hangs. But mm -hmm. Amanda, then we give them Praise. bags of fruit. Bags and little of fruit, nuts yes. inside was, of it. And what, what was that all about? So the bag of fruits and stuff were like signs of offerings and stuff and, and, and a way of gifts and stuff. But it was signs of offerings that they would offer to the gods and stuff and th during these pagan holidays. And they would have them at their feast and celebration. So talking about feast and celebration, we're also going to talk about the Yuletide. Yuletide logs are wrong as well and this is where we thought the 12 days of christmas was actually started before the 12 days and counted down to december 25th but, it but don't. actually the 12 days of christmas starts on december the 25th and lasts us to um i think it's january the 6th and up goes, to the christmas infinity i think that's what it's called and so it goes to the old christmas and yes, that's what the old people christmas. would call it yeah. because even our grandparents even some of our family they celebrated last year we left our stuff up to the old christmas because we're in, we was in the christmas 100 percent. if anybody yeah. could be in christmas check the cumby family in because we was in it and so as we start seeing these things, we had nutcrackers out there, big old nutcrackers. And then we found out that the nutcrackers was there to protect them from evil spirits, that they would bite them. And then you go back to even the, the ballets and that there was tied up with it, the Rat yeah. King and the Underworld. Man, I'm like, God, there's too much information here. And so we go even deeper than that and how we hang stockings the reason their stockings was hung was that there was a man named St. Nic Nicholas. And that he was getting ready to redeem some girls from being prostitutes. And he reached in there and throwed some gold in. And some fell among the stockings that was hung by the fire. And so That's, he had to do a certain miracles that what the Catholic would classify at least three of them to be a saint. Mm -hmm. And then once she was a saint, then this man, after he dies... They still go back to his, bo his body that was laying there, the remains of the bones, and they believe there's miracles there. They yeah. believe that this man can get me in contact. Well, I'm here to tell you there is only one intercessor between us and God, and that's Jesus Christ. That's right, because even, even some of the studies that we were studying about St. Nicholas— he when he died, his bones he was actually buried in one place, but then there was controversy between two different sets of people, and one set went to go dig up some of his bones, but yes. left, left the little fragments of bones, and then the other people went and got the left little the fragments and took them back with them. So it's like he scattered in different parts of two different places, but where they actually. Uh, got him buried in his tomb site, they will actually go down and extract myrrh out of it, is what the studies are showing. And they will actually sell it to around the world so people can get miracles that way. 
And it's almost like when these people become saints and they're classified as saints and they are known for doing great things. And if this person needs something that that saint did, they go to that saint as being the intercessor to their God. And that's not what the Word teaches us. The Word teaches us that Jesus Christ is our intercessor, and the only way to get to the Father is through Him. Amen, And sister. that's John 14, 6, if I'm not mistaken, because yes. He teaches us, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but through me or by me, is what the Word says. Yes. And so we have to be careful on these things. And I'm not saying that St. Nicholas was not a good person. It's just how people take things and make an idol out of it. And I know some of you are thinking right now, well, I don't worship these trees or I don't worship these reeds or these stockings and stuff. Just stay tuned in. And once you start hearing it, what's going to happen is... Because I thought the same thing within a couple of hours ago because we have purged some of our stuff, but then we had our Christmas tree still left and we still had... Christmas wreaths on our window, and then when we got revelation of that and the studies and the facts behind that, I'm like, it's not worth it. And the Word will teach us, like Scott said, our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and there is going to be a time that we are going to be judged, and there's going to be a time, too, that God separates the wheat from the tares. And I had rather do what is right and know the feast that we are supposed to be celebrating, which is the feast in the Bible that God tells us to celebrate and not be deceived by the enemy and celebrating these other things to give these other gods credit. Because here's one of the thoughts. Well, we're gonna, our children's going to miss out. I'm going to miss out on some of my, my favorite holiday. And then I had to think about this. Is it better to miss out on judgment also on the day of judgment? Because I'm going to miss out being judged because I'm going to be judged for what we've done in the past. Right. I'll also be judged for what I'm getting ready to do in the future and what I'm doing right now. Yes. And so you go even to the snow globes, and you can see some of these videos and these movies that we've watched throughout our life. We went to the movies, we've watched, and we've laughed, and that there is certain clauses that they have with the snow globes, yeah. and it ties back. It started from one place, but the family was in witchcraft. They were doing certain things to get into it, and then almost like the crystal ball came about. Yeah. And I'm sitting here thinking, Lord, how much more do we really need to go And then we step into Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, Frosty the Snowman through a magician. Yes, and and a magician's wand wand is made out of a holly. Holly. And so Mm -hmm. now you're sitting there thinking, that's got me made out of a holly. Even Harry Potter's information's made out of it to do special casting. A holly tree. Yes, and Mm -hmm. so now think about it. Fertility. Now when you pull pull the rabbit out of the hat... The rabbit is probably one of the most fertile animals out yeah, there. Yeah, think about it. All the time out of a magician's hat, they want to pull a what? A rabbit. rabbit. And they'll say some words, which I'm not going to repeat, but they'll Starts say Starts with some, Abra, and you can and figure they, out the rest, and those are what? Those are open things where you actually open portables. When you say certain words like that, you allow demonic things to activity start to activity come into your house because of through the or words you can say and open like, blank and it's like mm-hmm. the things that's the little seeds that on top of a, a hamburger that's the last words of it and when you start using these words there are parts of spells there's parts of things that we've like oh my goodness but this is what we was taught when i was little we growed up we watched all kinds of things and we never thought about anything and now i think about no wonder the enemy had a right in our house everybody it was just part as it was. You know what I'm saying? It's just, that's just part human. We're right. enjoying these horror movies, but now Krampus has moved in, and he's been there, and we're He's just coming to... more enlightened today. And these practices are still where um, Krampus originated over there in parts of the Northern Europe states. Um, it's held still today over in Austria, if I'm not mistaken. They still have the praise yes. and go up and down the streets there where we studied that. And the kids love it over the there kids because love it. They're not, and it's just they've grown yeah. up. The Bible says the traditions of men has made God's work at no effect. Our traditions, what we've been taught, has a lot to do with us. When we tell our children, listen, you got to be good. Let me tell you, the Bible says correction. That's that's what we need to do. We don't need to tell them there's somebody taking a list, there's somebody checking it. We uh-huh. just need to be honest. We need to be truthful because if we don't. We're misleading it. And then it goes like to the mistletoe, and it's like a parasite that sits on a tree and it pulls the nutrients, part of the nutrients out. 
but then we hang it in our house and we expect to have what, Amanda? They expect to have romantic relationships. And even the white berries, what they represent, the red mm -hmm. ones, and it blows your mind because they think it's all about fertility. And then you have some of the biggest parties around Christmas time during those times, and it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It has to do with just enjoying yourself and having pleasure, and that's what the enemy is all about. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. And then there is going to be hell to pay. There he is. And so so these are some of the things that we have researched, and we are going to continue to share, share them. Share them with this also. One more thing. One of the words that Santa Claus always uses used to ho, ho, ho. Now think about that. Later it got offensive because of these foreign gods that they classified the women's that they would be right. with, that ain't, it ain't too pretty. So they changed it to a word that had a ha, ha, ha. And then you tie into the kundalini spirit. Yeah. There's all kinds of things. I'm telling you, there's a lot of demonic activity. And when you start doing this, it's going to be like pulling teeth at first. Because you ain't going to want to get rid of those devils. You're not going to get rid of those idols. And we're not here to make anybody upset or angry. We're just here to do what the Holy Spirit has led us to do, revelation of what is going on. And Scott and I and our children, we have decided to do what is right, and that's through purging. And we want to honor Jesus Christ and do our best to honor Him in everything that we do, what we have in our homes, because He's the one that's blessed us with it. And we want to share the information, and we not share just it with, with our children, with our viewers, and our family, but like Amanda said, our viewers, because we want you to subscribe. We want you to be part of our family. And when we get information, we're going to bring it to you. Because we were also once deceived, and we have been also in your shoes, maybe not in the same circumstances. But we have been deceived too, as well. And we understand certain sites won't let us bring information, but so much. But thank God He blessed us with our own network. You can download our apps at Cumbies Network. You can watch it on your televisions. You can watch it. It's available to over 300 million people. And when you can actually tap into it, we'll have our resources there. So if it does get cut off, we're going to bring it to you. And the only thing it does is just tune in and start watching and become part of our family. And we ask you for prayers and support because we need that prayer. We need for people to step in and say, you know what, I'm going to sit there. I'm going to make a difference in this because I've learned. I've ate from this table because when you start seeing the research that's coming out every day, next day, the next day, you're going to sit back and say, how in the world? And then when you get it all, you're going to look back and say, wow, this really ties in. And it even shows where America even inside Washington, D.C., how all this lines up, even with the Vatican. Then it lines up and shows us, even as the Antichrist, how he's coming in. Antichrist. He's a false Christ. And people, we need to be ready. The Bible says put on the whole armor of God, not part of it, but all of it. it. And if we don't put it on, we'll never understand what's getting ready to take place. We're going to be deceived. And that's where our family has. And our children now, my little boy runs around, our little boy runs around, and he's like, there's something there, there's something there. And um, I'm just so thankful for our little girl, for our wonderful, wonderful mama right here, and me for just raising our family. And we thank y'all for your prayers. Yes. So please stay tuned in with us and join us on our next video as we share some more secrets about Christmas. Thank you, and may God bless you.